government is such a an artificial topic. It's hard to switch from the natural world to the world created by human will uh, for different purposes through different time. And through all the constitutional um, talks that we've had with with Canada, the one word that we've had the deepest trouble translating in any indigenous language is the concept of government. Uh, if we use the Eurocentric definition of government, it makes no sense uh, when we put it into indigenous languages. Um, because we've never had a system um, of rulers in most Aboriginal societies. We've never had a, a real system of government of people who could boss us around and tell us what to do. Uh, we've had a theory of, of really persuasion and uh, council meetings where everyone are fairly equal to reach a, a form of consensus. But that kind of um, uh, idea that goes from the local all the way to a confederation um, isn't apparent in Eurocentric thought and they have a totally different version of government that comes from them being kicked out of paradise and God telling them to figure out their own way if they weren't going to follow God's law. Um, they have a whole, they had to imagine and recreate their societies and I think they've done a very poor job of it from an Aboriginal perspective and it's created endless kinds of uh, power disputes and created a strange language of power. We have tried to um, ameliorate the language of power in Canada and that Ovid had talked about uh, by creating constitutional supremacy versus political supremacy. And the courts have given us a very wonderful idea, uh, more imaginary and innovative and creative than what has existed in the past in Canada in terms of the Crown, is that in all aspects the Crown has to act honorably toward Aboriginal peoples in their Aboriginal rights. And this creates for us a theory of honorable governance versus good governance. The colonists only got good governance from the imperial crown. We have a new version of honest, uh, ethical, uh, honorable governance that no one knows how to define. The crown has tried to put codes of honorable conduct together um, by themselves about how they're going to relate to us and they miss the dialogical nature of honorable and other forms of government is that while we don't have many people in the legislative assemblies or parliament you know our constitution our treaty uh, our aboriginal rights are supposed to regulate those assemblies and regulate what we call democracy and that's a, a new concept and it's um, so new and innovative and so rich with the dialogue and it's going to be, if it moves from the Eurocentric monologue uh, to a, a dialogue with indigenous thought about uh, one, what is humanity and what's human nature and who should control what parts of human nature and for what reasons under a under the superstructure of a ecological sovereignty rather than the sovereignty of persons and sovereignties of assemblies that change from uh, season to season. Um, so that's where I wanted to, to start the discussion on governance. The most effective word in most Aboriginal language is relationships, uh, which is not the same as governance. It's a relationship with family, a relationship with the natural world, a relationship with people who come into your territory, and uh, ultimately a relationship with the inner person and the uh, external person. 